सब अक्यूट थाइरॉयडाइटस ट्रीटमेंट ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ पेशेंट्स विद सब अक्यूट थाइरॉयडाइटस शुड बी डायरेक्टेड एट प्रोवाइडिंग रिलीफ फॉर थाइरॉयड पेन एंड टेंडरनेस एंड अमेलियरेटिंग सिम्टम्स ऑफ हाइपर थाइरॉयडिज्म इफ प्रेजेंट थाइरॉयड फंक्शन टेस्ट शुड बी मॉनिटर्ड एवरी टू टू एट वीक्स टू कन्फर्म रिजोल्यूशन ऑफ हाइपर थाइरॉयडिज्म डिटेक्शन ऑफ हाइपो थाइरॉयडिज्म एंड सब्सिक्वेंट नॉर्मलाइजेशन ऑफ थाइरॉयड फंक्शन There are no trials assessing optimal treatment of subacute thyroiditis. Treatment recommendations are based upon observational data and clinical experience. Pain management. Some patients need no treatment because their symptoms are mild or are subsiding by the time they seek medical attention and the diagnosis is established. In the majority of patients, however, anti-inflammatory therapy with either a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug or prednisone is indicated. A reasonable approach is to start with acetyl salicylic acid, aspirin, two thousand six hundred mg daily. or an nsaid naproxen 500 to 1000 mg daily in two divided doses or ibuprofen 1200 to 3200 mg daily in three or four divided doses if there is no improvement in two or three days the nsaid should be discontinued and prednisone 40 mg daily initiated prednisone therapy should result in pain relief in 1 to 2 days if not the diagnosis should be questioned in patients with severe pain prednisone is a reasonable first line therapy once the pain is relieved by prednisone an attempt should be made to find the lowest possible dose that provides adequate pain relief by reducing the dose by 5 to 10 mg every 5 to 7 days should pain reoccur increase to the prior dose and maintain that dose for approximately 2 weeks and attempt to taper again typically a 2 to 8 week course of prednisone is required and occasionally the course may be even more prolonged nsaids and prednisone zone can cause a variety of systemic symptoms and the prescribing healthcare provider and patient should be familiar with its relative contraindications medication interactions and adverse effects although symptomatic relief is achieved with corticosteroid therapy it does not prevent early and late onset thyroid dysfunction as an example in one retrospective community study during long term monitoring patients who had received prednisone had a greater likelihood of developing transient hypothyroidism 25% as compared with those who did not receive prednisone 10% corticosteroid therapy may be associated with shorter overall disease duration management of symptomatic hyperthyroidism therapy for hyperthyroidism is not often needed because symptoms if present are mild and short lived those few patients who have bothersome symptoms of hyperthyroidism such as palpitations anxiety or tremor may benefit from treatment with a beta blocker such as 40 to 120 mg propranolol or 25 to 50 mg atenolol daily for a few weeks while they are thyrotoxic Thionamide should not be used because hyperthyroidism is not caused by excess thyroid hormone synthesis. Radioactive iodine therapy is neither effective nor indicated because the uptake of radioiodine is very low and the disease is usually self-limiting. Management of hypothyroidism. Therapy for hypothyroidism is not often needed because symptoms if present are usually mild and short lived. However, if the hypothyroidism is more pronounced, TSH greater than 10 mu a uh, milli units per liter or associated with more than mild symptoms, the patient should be treated with 50 or 100 micrograms of T4. levothyroxine for 6 to 8 weeks with a goal tsh in the normal range the t4 should then be discontinued and the patient reevaluated in 4 to 6 weeks to be sure that the hypothyroidism is not permanent